All right, hey everyone, how you're doing? This is uh, Eric Parker with One Number. Um, thanks for coming back for a, uh, another YouTube video. Uh, in today's walkthrough, I wanna talk about the different types of worksheet filters that you can utilize in Tableau Desktop. Um, a lot of you probably know that I'm a teacher. Uh, I teach all of Tableau's desktop and prep classes. I've built some of my own classes. Hey, you can come to my classes. Feel free to shoot me an email. I can tell you when I'm teaching them. You can hire me to come teach class for you and for your colleagues even. Um, so this is kind of based on a segment that I will do in that class where we talk about different types of filters that you can use. Okay, So it's going to be kind of the... Uh, the speed round here, we're gonna look at, I think I counted up as 11 different types of filters. Um, so you can see those broken out here. You've got your dimension type filters, you've got your measure type filters, and then you've got your date filters. Um, so these are all, again, different types of worksheet filters you can use. There's more filters that go outside of the bounds of this, but for the sake of keeping this a reasonable length video, we're just gonna look at these 11. So let's start with sort of a standard drop down selection filter where I got a worksheet like this that's showing me um, sales by category and subcategory, right? So what I wanna do here is I wanna look at um, how can I filter down my categories to just office supplies, for instance, okay? So I'm just gonna find my category field, add this to the filters card, and just select office supplies, okay? Simple as that. I can show this filter for my users if I want them to be able to make those kinds of selections as well. So I hit the drop down next to this pill, say show filter. And now my user has this drop down. You know, if I was to publish this to server, for instance, now they can choose to add or remove categories. You can even have multiple selection filters working in sync. I'm going to keep this part brief, but I just want to show you how this works. I'm going to add subcategory to filters as well. I'm going to also show the subcategory. Um, filter. Okay. And then right now, notice that um, subcategories is only showing the subcategories within office supplies. That is because right now, subcategory is set to show um, all values in hierarchy rather than all values in database. So if I wanted to show everything all the time, I could do it like this. Um, but honestly, I like all values in hierarchy or in your case, um, it, these values, you know, if you're using your own fields, they might not be in a hierarchy like this. So you might need to say only relevant values, in which case it's only gonna show you the subcategories based on any other selection in any other filter, okay? If you wanna have some fun exploring, trying things out, you can hit this drop down. There's all kinds of different ways you can make these filters look. So instead of a multiple value list, I could have a multiple value drop down. looks like so. And one of my favorite things, and this is gonna help your performance so much if you're running into filtering performance issues, you hit the drop down, you say customize and show apply button. So now kind of like Excel, a change is not gonna be applied until I hit the apply button. Uh, that's killer, I use that all the time. All right, let's keep moving on. A wildcard filter allows you to filter down to match just a text expression. So notice the question here is how much revenue did we bring in from the sale of printer products? So I'm gonna put a copy of the product name field on filters. I'm gonna to go to wildcard and I'm just gonna search the term printer. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and show that filter. So my end user could search a different term if they want to, copier, right? They could totally do that, that's fine. Really only works with one value at a time. If you wanted to have multiple different types of options, you might want to try and use a contains function in a calculation. Uh, it goes outside the bounds of what we're doing today, but if you just Google Tableau contains function, you'll find some um, examples of that. So now I can see that I've got 43 um, different products in the printer space and the total sales has come out to $153,000. Okay. A condition filter, um, how I usually use a condition filter is to set a condition based on a dimension which is not currently in the worksheet. So you can see the question here says, which products are customers who purchase at least $10,000 of goods buying? So I'm gonna put my customer name field on filters and I'm gonna set a condition where sum of sales needs to be greater than or equal to $10,000. 
So now this is just showing me which products my you know ten thousand dollars and greater um, customers are buying. So you can see that this Canon Image class, is a big piece of it, Cisco teleconference, etc. Okay, so that sort of does it for. Oh no, actually one more, one more dimension type filter, um, a top ten. So I'm going to go ahead and create a quick sheet here, which shows us sales by state. And let's say I want to whittle this down to just the top 10. So I'm going to put a copy of state on the filters card and just choose top 10. So you might wonder, okay, that gives us a top 10, but how's that different? Or, or why is that better than just selecting values and saying keep only? Um, so the beauty of using something like condition or top 10 uh, is that it's dynamic. So if we refresh this data in three months and there's a different top 10 states, that top 10 will update. All right, so that does it for our four types of dimension filters. Um, so let's look at some measure filters, all right? Um, so the main type of measure filter that you would come across is going to be a range type filter. So for instance, right now I'm seeing sales by product, and let's say that I wanna have the flexibility to say, you know, I really only wanna see products that had at least $15,000 worth of sales. So one way of doing that is I'm gonna get a copy of sales and drag and drop this onto filters. And here's something that's a little bit different about when you drag and drop a measure to filters instead of a dimension. Tableau will ask you how you want to aggregate that measure. So for instance, like, do I wanna see the sum of sales or the average or the individualized values? So you might be wondering, what does that mean? What should I choose? I generally recommend matching the aggregation of the field as it is currently being used in your worksheet to avoid confusion. So you're not filtering on average sales when you're displaying sum of sales, okay? All values would be like down to the transactional level with the Superstore data. So, you know, my highest value wouldn't be the 60,000 bar. It might say $10,000 or something, something lower. Anyways, to be safe, probably pick the aggregation that you already see on the pill in your worksheet. So I hit next and then notice it's a range of values. So it starts at the lowest value at buck uh, $1.62. And it tops out the highest value, 61,599. And if you want to restrict the user to only be able to use the lower end or the higher end, that's the at least or at most sections. So I'm going to go ahead and show this filter. And I left it adjustable on both ends. So the user can either slide the uh, range adjuster like this or could even type in values as well. So that's the most common way to filter using a measure. Okay, um, You also have what are called um, special filters with measures. So oftentimes you're using this to either only keep nulls or remove nulls. So for instance, like this says how many products are missing a discount value. So notice usually we can see, hey, on average, we discounted this product 7% when we sold it. Uh, but occasionally, you know, if we scroll along far enough, I'm going to find situations where we didn't have discount values. For some reason, we didn't input them in our system. Okay, so I wanna figure out just how many nulls are there. So I'm gonna put a copy of this discount field on filters. Um, I'll just match it again to the way that it is currently. So I'll say average. I'm gonna to go to special, and I'm gonna say keep only null values. So I'll hit okay, and now you can see all these product names that don't have a discount value. So to answer this question, how many products are missing a discount value? 492. See that in the status bar there. All right, so those are your measure type filters. Um, so lastly, we're gonna look at date type filters. So let's start with date parts, which is very similar to something like a dimension filter, or I should say a selection filter. So if I just put year of order date on filters, you know, much like a dimension, I could just say, you know what? I don't really want to see 2018. So that's very similar to like kind of my dimensional selection filter. Okay. Um, date range would be a little different. This would be more like a measure filter um, or a, a range filter as we call them. So if I put order date on filters and choose range of dates, notice that it gives my user these options. So if I hit okay, and show this filter, 
Now I could, you know, move the slider to limit the selection or even pick from a calendar here. I want to do that instead. So that's my sort of date range filter. And this one is really awesome. I, I hope you uh, find some use out of this if you didn't know it existed already. The relative date filter. So how have sales performed over the last 30 days? Uh, give me a quick second here to create a daily sales chart like was in the last sheet. So let's say that I want this to be dynamic and always be showing the last 30 days regardless of what day it is today. So I'm filming this, I think it's August 12th. So this would show me roughly July 13th through August 12th. So I'm gonna put a copy of order date on filters. I'm gonna choose relative date. And relative date allows you to pick things like today, yesterday, last week, last three months. You can set the date unit and the number of values. So I'm gonna say last 30 days. And like we talked about, so this starts, uh, I was one off. So it starts on July 14th, and then this runs through August 12th. All right, and uh, actually you can expose that to your end user as well. So if they want to be able to change this, hey, I actually really wanna see the last 60 days, um, they can you know, adjust and impact a relative date filter, uh, just like any other type of filter. So hope that gives you a pretty good perspective on some of the different types of filters that you can utilize in Tableau worksheets. Uh, I just wanna thank you for dropping by and we'll look forward to catching you on another video soon.